morning to you worshiping here, to you on the live stream, we welcome you. You're probably drier than we are right now because it's raining pretty steadily out here. Trying to button my coat and get my tie in the middle of it. No, oh, you're going to have to do recruiting for your section here. It's kind of, kind of light. <laughs> we got a hey, th third of the church filled. Glad to have everyone out this morning. Those of you that are visiting with us, I keep on coming. We love having you. A couple of things I want to point out here in the order of the worship service today. You'll notice that we have changed some of the responses. The response after the Lord's Prayer is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. It's on page 134, so you need your hymnal for these. And then after the lighting of the Advent wreath, it's all in the bulletin, we sing one candle is lit since this is the first Sunday of Advent, the candle of hope. And that will sing the first verse, which is number 128. Next week, we're going to add a little bit more Christmas music since it's Christmas. And we only get one chance a year to sing these things. So we want to sing as many Christmas songs as we can. I told Shirley today, and she sighed and said, oh, no, not, she didn't. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm rolling out here on the fiction end of this now. Turn with me back to bulletin, please, real quickly. Wednesday activities resume. That's simple enough to do. We will be meeting this week and then the next week, and then we will conclude Seekers in W2W until next until 2023. The community choir, for those of you involved in that, and we hope we're really working hard to get more people to fill this place up this year, since we don't currently have any restrictions on that regard. For the programs that are on the 14th, which is Wednesday night, the 14th, and the following Sunday, the 18th. The 14th is at 7 o'clock. The 18th is at um, yeah, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock, trying to keep them all in mind. You'll hear more about that. Please read about the fundraiser here and that we're looking for donations for that. I won't read all of that to you, but please do that. Food pantry drive coming up. And we want to be sure that we have plenty in the bin for those things. I think that's all we have. Just be sure and sing along with these responses. The response after the benediction is now go tell it on the mountain for the holidays. And so we are glad to have everyone here, everyone worshiping with us as the Advent season 
begins. I hope all of you had a good Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, Joe, about the University of Louisville, uh, but for the Kentucky fans, it was a nice day and it was a lot prettier day, I'll tell you personally, in the stadium than it was for the Georgia game the week before. It was right pleasant last night, actually. So again, we welcome you to our service of worship. Sally? If you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We sing praises to your name in word and song. Music of the season is a melody for our souls as we anticipate the birth of Jesus. Preparation is done with open, grateful hearts to welcome the Christmas season, the season of giving, giving from the heart, and being mindful of why it is so important to give to those less fortunate, for that is what Jesus taught in his many teachings. On the first Sunday of Advent, our focus is on hope, for without hope, there is no future. The future is bright as all mankind experiences your eternal love and every day, even if it doesn't go noticed. Thy will be done. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together and feel the universal bond of the world, words as we pray. For this prayer is for all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you will remain standing, we'll have our hymn of praise, which is hymn number 20, 125, Come, O Long Expected Jesus. We'll sing all verses of 125. Beautiful song. We need to learn that one. Want to have a seat? All right, children's moment. 
Miss Sally, you're doing it all today. So, Jane, here we go. Good. Three today. Wonderful. Good. You all come right up here and sit. I'll sit in the middle here. Good to have you all here today. I'm going to put this back here. But first, I want to talk about something a little bit. Have you guys been getting ready for Christmas? Yeah. That's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Advent. That's why we have this Advent wreath, and we'll talk about more of it later. But it's a time that everybody puts up the Christmas trees and does lots of decorating. We did some decorating in here. These beautiful Christmas trees are up. Tony put the Christmas trees up, and they're all lit and everything. They look pretty and warm. But when we put our Christmas trees up, there's one thing I want to talk about, and that's why I brought this up here. There's lots of different little things here. Can you, why don't you, what, what is your name? Dakota. Okay, Dakota. Can you pick out the little baby in that? This is the, this is the little baby Jesus right here. That's the little baby Jesus. That's one thing that is important to remember when you're putting up your Christmas tree. The Christmas is the time of Jesus' birth. Christmas is Jesus' birthday. I know you guys have a birthday. When is your birthday? April 11th. Wow, when's your birthday? October 21st. You just had one not too long ago, didn't you? How old were you on your birthday? Nine. Wow. And Jane Rose has got a birthday coming up. You know when your birthday is, Jane? It's coming up in May. She's got a birthday coming up in May. But that's why I brought all these little, these little, um, figures up here for you today. This is called a nativity set. And we usually, I usually keep this at the back of the church, but I wanted to bring it out today because it's a pretty color. It's white, but yet it's trimmed in gold and it's pretty. And I just wanted you to look at all of those and I wanted you to see the little baby Jesus because this is, this is Mary, his mother. And let's see, Joseph is down in here. There's Joseph. There, Joseph is down in there. And you, this is, um, What's he carrying on his shoulders there? Do you know what that is? A sheep. Yeah, that's a sheep. That's a little lamb. And he's watching over the lamb. There's shepherds in the nativity also. And like I said, at Christmas time, it's good to remember to keep Jesus in your heart because this is Jesus' birthday. It's a very special day. Want to bow your heads for a word of prayer? Dear God, please be with us today as we celebrate Advent and we learn about the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is a special wreath. It adds warmth to our life. It adds, its flames add warmth to our life, even when it gets cold outside. We always have that flicker inside of us, that flicker of warmth. Be with us in all that we do this week, for we pray this, and all our prayers we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and take that back with you. You can take that back with you, too. I'll get it back from you later, okay? You can go ahead. You can show those to Abby. <laughs> this is the first Sunday of Advent, as we know. This is the Sunday of hope. There will be four of these and then Christmas Sunday. We light the Advent wreath today. This is the first Sunday. Advent means simply coming. And in this season, we prepare for the coming of Christ. We light the candle on the Advent wreath to remind us of the blessings that Christ brings to the world. The Advent wreath includes many symbols. The wreath is in a circle with no beginning and no ending. This reminds us that there is no beginning and no ending to God and that God's love and caring for us never ends. The candles tell us the light shining into our world with Jesus Christ. The colors of the Advent candles remind us of our need for God's help to be the people we should be. The white candle, which we light on Christmas Eve, signifies the birth of Jesus. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope. And we always hope that the lighter works. It works. There it we worked. Are. The prophet Jeremiah spoke words of hope to Israel. He talked about the promise of shalom and of a new beginning. We hope and pray for a world of peace and harmony. 
Hope is like a flame that warms and comforts us. As we light this candle, we celebrate the hope of the prophets and the hope we have in Jesus Christ. We continue to hope in God's promise that Christ will continue to fill our lives and the life of the world with love and joy and peace. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the flame of hope. As we prepare for Christ's coming, help us to share our hope with others. Amen. We will, sing, we will now sing the first verse of hymn number 128, When Candles Lit. continue our service of worship. Let's turn together to the prayer list on the back of the bulletin. Again, we're glad to have everyone here. If you're visiting with us, we're glad to have you and we're glad to have you return to worship with us. Often, those of you watching at home, we're always blessed to have you. On the prayer list, Penny Smith. Penny continues to recover. I heard from her just yesterday. She says it's slow, but it's steady. So we want to continue to hold her in our prayers. Janet McGahey, still facing some surgery coming up. We want to hold her in our prayers. And Alan Jones to continue to hold him. Please look over the list here that of the extended list. If there are people that we need to move or change, please let us know. We can do this fairly easily on the Facebook page and on the website. And uh, we want to be sure that we have everywhere one where they need to be. Are there any additions to the prayer list here in the house? Anthony Bickers. Anthony Bickers. Any others? Look here. Pouring down rain when we come into church. Now the sun's shining. Time 12 o'clock comes. <laughs> I'm going to be raining again. <laughs> but we'll hope for the best that that doesn't happen. Okay, let's pause for a moment then of quiet meditation. Our Father God, as we gather here, having just celebrated the uniquely American holiday of Advent, I mean rather Thanksgiving, we now turn our attention to Advent. We turn our attention for the next 25, 24 days that are left before Christmas. We turn our attention to the focus of the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we do so, O oh God, May that really, may we really take some time to focus, to think about the gift that you gave us. Theology is a complicated thing, and as we discuss how, when, why, all of these things, it becomes difficult for us to understand, but then what we are trying to understand is mortals, as mortals, is something that comes from you, the glory and the crowning immortal. You devised this. You are the one that put it together. You are the one that gives us hope. Our world, oh God, needs hope. It's always needed hope. 2,000 years, three, four, five, go back as many millennia as you want to, whatever the situation happened to be at that particular moment, there needed to be hope. People hoped for things to be better. They hoped to be able to live through the night. 
They hoped that their relatives and their families wouldn't die or be killed or they wouldn't freeze to death in the winter. Things that we don't think so much about those anymore, but now we think about the same things about a concern for our families. Whatever the age, we always need hope. We light this candle. This candle reminds us of that hope. As we gather here today, O oh God, we share the songs. We sing the, we say the words and read the words of the Christmas story. We talk about the giving of your son, Jesus Christ, and all he meant for us. Help us during this season to feel your presence especially within us. As we as a congregation in this community work to strengthen our outreach and our involvement, we can never say that we've had enough. While we hear others talk about well, what's going to happen to small churches and what's going to happen going into the future, we're not asking that question, oh God. The question we want to know is where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? What direction do you want us to go in? How can we use the many talents of the folks that are a part of this church as members, as friends, as those who watch on live stream, as those who share this service, how can we share those talents to strengthen your kingdom? We do it through the work of this church. We don't wring our hands and sit around wondering about keeping the doors open. We know that you will bless us with that as you have, and that this can be a tool, a tool to help spread your word and your love. As we gather here today on this first Sunday of Advent, May the living, breathing spirit of your son, Jesus Christ, enter each of our hearts. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Mr. Weldon, sir. Bob's going to sing a... You need to turn my volume down. Bob's going to sing a really fun, lively song that helps get us in the mood for Christmas. And even though this tends to be a busy season, we need to remember the reason, and that's what the song is about, that we're, we celebrate because of Jesus' birth. And when I raise my hand like that and say everybody, by then you'll know the works. So that means you join me. Please. <laughs> Everybody likes to take a holiday Everybody likes to take a rest Spending time together with the family Sharing lots of love and happiness Come on, ring those bells Light the Christmas tree Jesus is the King Born for you and me Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this, your birthday. Celebrations come because of something good. Celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem. Greatest celebration of them all. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Everybody, come on, ring those bells, like the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday.
That's just delightful. Where'd you all find that, Shirley? Yeah, credit of the blame, huh? One or the other, so it's great. I want to reflect just a second on what Sally said, too. Thank you for all. Sally mentioned Tony. I know he's humble. There were a lot more people that had to do with decorating this, putting up these trees. Jason sent me a great picture. <laughs> had, I think we think the trees would look wonderful right here, and they would have. I said, the only trouble is I don't know what I'm going to do with the community choir if they leave the trees out here. I'm sorry. I'm sure there were bad things said about me after that, but you don't have to tell me. <laughs> so we had to move them out to the corners so that we can get the community choir in here. But thank you so much for all of the work that goes into the behind the scenes of keeping this building working and, and as beautiful as it is. As we begin the Advent season, first of all, I want to read the two scriptures that we have selected for today. The first one comes from the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Typically, this is one of the books that when we talk about the prophecies of Jesus coming, we look to Isaiah because there are a lot of prophecies in Isaiah. We'll say a little more about that in a minute. This is the seventh chapter, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then from the gospel according to Matthew, and this is the beautiful Christmas story which we hear each and every year. And we need to let those words sink into our hearts and minds as we begin the season. First chapter, verses 18 through 25. And in years past, I've had members of the congregation read the scripture, read this passage. And I just wanted to mention that one that, I'm, that the name that's written in my Bible for reading this one time was Debbie Bingham. The late Debbie Bingham, who read this, had a beautiful voice and, and read this passage for us. She was a great contribution to the church, as many are, and, and as all of you are, that's a part of our journey. It's a part of the Advent journey. 1, 18 through 25. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken to the prophet, and we just read this. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had borne a son, and he called his name Jesus. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. The English poet of the 18th century, Alexander Pope, wrote a lot of things. He was very prolific in what the, the, his production. He was a Christian, very devout Christian, who believed that God had divinely designed the world in which we live. So unlike many poets of different ages whose spirituality or religion was something different or even non-existent in their opinion, Pope was a very Christian person. And he wrote these words from which the title of today's sermon comes. Hope springs eternal in the human breast. Man never is, but always to be blessed. Say a word about Pope at that point. He wrote a lot of things in couplets. If you heard, that's two sentences that rhyme. 
for those of you who are English scholars who remember your English from when in school, it's in iambic pentameter. It's five beats to, the, to the, each line, and it's a special type of beat that is there. He said of his writing, I lisp in couplets, for the couplets came. This is the way he wrote. So this is one of those couplets that has come down to us. That hope springs eternal. We may have even thought that was something that was scriptural because it sounds scriptural. Hope springs eternal. Changed it just a little bit to say hope always springs eternal. This particular passage came from the essay on man, the first epistle in 1732. As we begin our journey, our 2002 journey to the manger, the first step, as it has been for two millennia plus, 2,000 plus years now, is taken, understandably, reasonably, it's taken in hope. That first step is taken in hope. Hope that expectation that everything will be better. When you hope, what do you do? You say, I hope it doesn't rain when church is out. I hope tomorrow is better than yesterday. I hope this week is better than last week. This year is better than last year. On and on and on. It's part of the human nature because we just don't want to say, okay, I'm totally satisfied. We've talked about that before. We don't want to say, I'm totally satisfied. We want to say, I hope things improve. I hope things get better. You can all think in your own minds, what do you hope for? What do you hope to see improve? Hope doesn't, hope doesn't indicate in any way, form, or fashion things staying the same. Hope is a, a word filled with expectations. It's filled with, with what we, well, hope will happen. And it makes sense that that's where we were, would start our journey to Advent. Pope, in Alexander Pope, in so many of his writings, held out this eternal sense of hope. Because if we don't have hope, personally, collectively, as a country, as a church, as a civic organization, whatever, a family. If we don't have hope, we don't have anything. It's just like being dead in the water. One time I bought a boat. I know some of you have had boats. Bob has boats that run. Mine didn't. Bought this boat from this guy. <laughs> Bought this boat from this guy, a little old wooden boat, had an old 35 horsepower motor on it. I thought, this is the greatest deal I've ever made. Well, where I live on the Kentucky River, it's like living on a creek compared to where you are here on the, but nonetheless, it's water and it's fun. So I took my little boat, went way up the river, and it quit. It would not start. And I had to get back to the dock when my boat wouldn't start, my motor wouldn't start. Got the boat back to the dock with help from passers-by and people at pool and so forth. And finally, I decided I've had the last of the hope for this boat. It's going, and I let it go. But I had hope. I thought, well, this is a cute little thing. This is something the guy that had the dock where we had a boat dock, he said, this, is, this boat's all right. We can keep this boat running. We can keep this boat in good shape. We can keep this boat so you can use it. No, it was not that way. Sometimes it doesn't work out. That doesn't stop you from hoping. Whatever it is that you want to see happen, the birth of Jesus, something in your life, that begins with hope, begins with prayer. This is a part that's a part of our human souls that we need to tap into. Pope wrote about it. The Bible wrote about it. Many, many people have written about it. So what do we hope for? Where do we want to go? 
what do we want to do? We look around and we look back in the scriptures. Things were bad then. If you remember in your history and in your study that at this particular time, the coming of Jesus, the people of God were under the heel, the foot, the rule of Rome. They were looking, hoping for a Messiah. They were looking for someone who would lead them from this bondage to Rome. They would lead them from the bondage and take them and let them be the people that they wanted to be, the people that they hoped to be. What holds you down? See, we don't just talk about Jesus with this or what happened in this story 2,000 years ago. What holds you from being what you want to be, what you want to accomplish, what you want to hope for. These scriptures provide us such great inspiration. Things were bad. They needed help. We read these prophecies here. We've talked many, many times in classes, and we will have other classes, which I will share more of this. But one of my professors in the seminary, talked about these prophecies. The prophecies, as we speak academically, the prophecies weren't particularly about Jesus. The prophecies were about a Messiah. About a Messiah. And sometimes people would come along, they would be born, they would grow up, they would think, maybe this is the Messiah. Maybe this is the one that fulfills the Scripture. But then invariably something happened to them. What they were looking for, as we all know, was a military king. Who's going to take us out of this? Then came Jesus. And that was not the Messiah. That was not the Messiah they were expecting. That's why so many of the people that Jesus came to, the Jewish nation at that point, they rejected him. Because he said, they said, this is not who we want. We need someone else. Study tells us that who they were looking for to fit in with the Old Testament, to fit in with what they had, was a person who fulfilled two qualities in life. One was they wanted, they wanted someone who would be the new Moses. Moses was considered the lawgiver. Moses was the one who brought the Ten Commandments. Moses it was the one who led the people out of the wilderness. Moses was the lawgiver. They wanted someone who would lead the people that could, could just lead them. That's what they wanted. And they also wanted people. You know, people, they're, they're picky. What kind of leader do you want? You ever sit on a pulpit committee in a church? You ought to sit on my side of a pulpit committee in a church. Finally, it's just you wonder, well, what else do they want? Do they want me to submit nude pictures of my family? Or what, what do they want? They want everything. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about the other? I just finally gave up on that. I thought, I can't answer all these things. But this is what they wanted. They wanted a lawgiver, and they wanted a charismatic leader. You know what char charisma is? We watch Son-in-Law every year. The movie was Polly Shore Thanksgiving, and he's going around the dorm with his little camera of the 1990s visit and vintage, and he sees usually a pretty girl, pretty co-ed there, and he'll say, charisma. And then he goes into what it's a quality, and he recites what it's a quality of leadership and so forth. And then he's talking to her, and she's saying, what the heck? And he sees somebody else going down the hall, he takes off with... I'm sorry I'm moving around so much. I know that's driving you all crazy. Just got to stand up there and move with me. Wherever I go, just go with me. I'm not going any. I'll stay right here. Follows her down the hall. He says, charisma. And he quotes that again. Well, that's what the people were looking for. They wanted someone like King David. King David was far from perfect, but, man, he was a heck of a leader. It's kind of like comparing, I, I hesitate to do this. Joe, my apologies. It's kind of like comparing Mark Stoops and John Calipari. One has charisma and one doesn't. Anyone who follows UK sports can probably pick out the one that doesn't have a whole lot of oomph and so forth going on. Well, they both are having pretty successful programs. They both make more than I do. 
Does that, do any of you make $8.6 million a year? Gee, I'd love to make that kind of money. I thought that'd be great. $8.6 million a year, and you lose to Vanderbilt with your football team. And you lose to St. Peter's in the first round of the NCAA. And you get $8.6 million. And you get a raise. You get a continuation. But you got charisma. You got the job. You're getting it done. We hope. That's what they hoped of Jesus. Give us somebody that can, one, get the job done, and give us someone that can inspire us as a leader. There are two different characteristics. You can find people who can get the job done, but they just, they just don't inspire others as they need to. Or you can find somebody who inspires people, but they don't have a clue what they're doing. They're just kind of inspirational. What they were looking for was someone who came together, a certain kind of a leader. And what did God send? What did God send? He sent a baby. He sent a baby. Now, which of the two characteristics did that fulfill? Was this person the good lawgiver? Or was this person the charismatic leader? Matthew 1, again. I want to look at one verse, one only, 23. The one we started with on Isaiah. Virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. One of the anthems that the choir sings, community choir and our choir here at church when we had one, is this little number called, Who Would Send a Baby? I know Shirley's going to say, why didn't you give me that before church, and I could have played that for you. That would have been fine. But the words are these. Who would send a baby to heal a world in pain? Who would send a baby, a tiny child? When the world, that's great, this is just as appropriate then, now, and maybe tomorrow. When the world is crying for the promised one, who would send his only son? Who would send his only son? Who would send a baby to light the world with love? Who would send a baby? We're going on with the Advent candle, a tiny child. When the world is hoping for the promised one, who would send his only son? Who would, send a, who would choose a manger to cradle a king? Who would send angels to sing? Who would hang a star above the shine on the gift of his infinite love? Who would send a baby to bless a world with peace? Who would send a baby, a tiny child? When the world is yearning for the promised one, who would send a baby? Who would send a baby? God sent the baby to heal the world in pain. And that's where we start. The hope of Advent, the peace, the joy, the love as we celebrate this great season. Are we about to gather in prayer? Oh God, we can't explain anything that you do. And that's great because that's what makes you God and makes us who we are. But we can embrace what you do. We can embrace what you do. We can embrace the moment. We can embrace the way that you reach out to us. We can embrace what you do in our lives. And today, oh God, we embrace the moment. For we ask the question, who would send a baby? And the answer is, you sent Jesus, your only begotten son. May we be blessed through this month. May the living child grow and bless and lead and guide and inspire us. In his name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning and our hymn of welcome to the communion table is hymn number 119, the hope, one of the hope hymns of Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Number 119, we've heard about Emmanuel, verses 1, 3, and 4, 119. Please.
we come to the time where we gather around the Lord's table. In this Christmas season, the Lord's table takes on a special meaning. This is a time that we come and we gather and we remember Jesus' many great sacrifices. Yes, Jesus came to us as a little tiny baby, but we remember him at this table and these, these sacraments of bread and wine Help us to remember, like I said, all those great sacrifices that Jesus made for us. As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather. Thank you for the beginning of the greatest season. Thank you for the greatest gift. For it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, in his name that we gather to celebrate his birth, his his maturity, his life, his lessons, his teachings, his sacrifice, and the grace that flows from his ultimate, ultimate gift, his resurrection. Remember, Father, the people that thou created and help us to remember that the hopes and fears of all the years are gathered in him tonight. Help us to realize that he is with us here at this table, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. And on the night that they gathered in the upper room, the very night that Jesus would be betrayed, he took the bread, and he blessed it, and he passed it among them, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. And we do this now together in remembrance of him. And in like manner, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he passed it among his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all you of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And remember, as often as you eat the bread, and you do drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us take the fruit of the vine together and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Dear loving God, as we go forth from the sanctuary, let us carry this wonderful Christmas feeling that we have in our hearts as we decorate our homes and, re and we rejoice in those things around us. Remember what I said today in the children's moments, that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Christmas is about Jesus. Jesus came to us as a tiny child. Let us go out into the world this week and for the rest of our lives and spread that good news of Jesus. We can spread that good news in our smiles that we have every day. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week I went to sleep during the last prayer. I don't know why, Molly. And I looked up and Molly, <laughs> I forgot to even get up and do anything. May we stand for the benediction. Please remember that since we don't do meet and greet at the beginning, shake hands up here somewhere so everybody knows where we are. We're happy to be here. I'll try to hold still now, Molly. I'm going to hold still, I promise. <laughs> Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for all of what Christmas means of the memories that fill our hearts, of the hopes that we have for this Christmas and beyond. Help us, O oh God, to see our way through the challenges of the season and to feel your presence, just as those so many years ago felt it in the birth of your son. In his name we ask it. Amen. Amen.